Welcome to the Pike County Report. I'm Brandon Roberts here, as always, with uh, our Judge Executive, Wayne T. Rutherford. And Judge, uh, you've been in office now five different decades. You've seen a lot happen around this county. And uh, one of them, I know you feel very strongly about, are, is the library system in this county. And you've always been an advocate for the libraries, and you continue to be one. And we got a Brandon, we had no county libraries when I came in office. And realizing that education and availability to information for students especially and adults uh, then we had to start thinking about a library system and that, that, that was a huge undertaking and wasn't able to at the first of my administrations until we was able to get the later severance tax passed but pre-severance tax yes we did start but it was a community and county government, uh, we did it ourselves. I can remember going to uh, Paul Patton at Kentucky Elkhorn Coal Corporation at his office and said, uh, Mr. Patton, you live here at Virgit at, at area, and we need a library for this community. And uh, we we have several tax coming in, and, and it's eligible, and and uh, we can uh, we have a, a also a federal CETA program, which is in effect now through the federal government, for jobs through public entities. And if we can get a library here at Burgi, we can man it. And I said, I've already been to Frankfurt and saw the state librarian. And he has told me that, uh, that they would provide us the books for any libraries that the county and community would establish. So we, uh, uh, Paul Patton said, uh, we'll pay for the library. So we put it in at the mouth of Longfort. Got a lady who lived a thousand feet, I think, of the library, and was a librarian, and the state brought the books. We took volunteers from the community, some of his employees at Kentucky Elkhorn, uh, some, some county employed, didn't have many back then, and built the shelves and we opened up a library. We, we then, uh, you had a, a library in Pikeville at the time, had had for many, many years. But we went to Elkhorn City and we rented a building at Elkhorn City or got it with no rent. Uh, got a lady who was a hunt lady who was wife of the local barber up there and she was a librarian, and we got the books from State Library, opened up a library. Then, then of course, we, we went to the Belfry area and went up Pond Creek, uh, up Pond Creek, up to uh, almost, one to the head of Pond Creek, about two-thirds up. United Mine Workers was, uh, had, was moving out of the county. Uh, and not having uh, union halls in every little community. And they had closed one up in this area and contacted the United Mine Workers of America and said, told them what we wanted to do, that we wanted to establish libraries in Pike County. At no rent, they let us use the building. We took, had a community meeting, took people, built the shelves, uh, and, uh, and hired a library and on the CETA program, opened up a library for the people in Belfry, Pond Creek area. Uh, then we went to Phelps. Went to Phelps, we ended up up on the mountain going over into Stopover at Majestic, where a church had built them a new church. This was a relatively small church, but they had built them a, a larger church and moved in it. And we went and met with the pastor, had a community meeting. Uh, the magistrates were involved at all of these community meetings. And we, we then established a library, no rent, rent free. And we had the CETA program. And, and we, we had, and, and then, as I mentioned earlier, then we had severance tax coming in. Then, Knowing that Pike County and knowing that we had to upgrade these libraries out in the county, 
made a trip back to the state library in Frankfurt and said, look, we need to change the books out the libraries that we have established with your help and rotate certain books, get the latest editions for our people. And, and I said, at one time you had a mobile unit in Pike County, a unit that went out into communities, advertised, uh, and then went out and people could come to, the, to it and they could, uh, they could ch check out their books and do business just like they would do it in the library they'd go in. They could order a book and then in the meantime then bring it back the next trip they came out. So uh, I said we would like to have that brought back into the county. State library was <laughs> very direct with me and said, Judge, I'll do that for your people. If you will uh, commit to me, if the people of Pike County wants a library district and we bring you a petition in the future that you will put it on the agenda of the physical court for action to set up a taxing district so that libraries in Pike County will be the same as the libraries uh, in, in uh, and he, he talked about the one in Pikeville, which they had one that's in leased property, and they had moved two or three times. And he said so that one could be built uh, in Pikeville and one could be built out in the county where you have placed. Uh, and, 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 and he said, I want to tell you something, you're all going to be recognized this year for what you've done in a library system as a county and community and working with us in putting the and putting the books in these libraries. But uh, later, a few years later, the state librarian, with all of these people running these libraries, came into my office and handed me a petition signed by Pike Countyans stating that they wanted the physical court to establish a taxing district. When we got it uh, under the statute, what I do with it as county judge uh, at that time, as county judge executive now, is comply with the statute, give it to the county attorney. He in turn advises us of the steps under the statute. The first step is to deliver this petition and put it in the custody of the county court clerk. And uh, the county attorney and I did this that very day with the with the uh, state library head of the Kentucky Library in Frankfurt, and put it in custody of the clerk at that time, John Paul Blair. And under the statute, the county attorney advised the clerk that he was to match the signatures of on all the petitions. Uh, in his office with their voting record. That's, that's what they used. And the clerk had to certify back to my office that, uh, in fact, these people had, in fact, signed that petition. And that was their signature as the best they could tell. So a uh, month or two later, delivered back to me by the county clerk and his staff had, had done the best they could. And they determined by a large amount, a large number, that this county was calling for the physical court to take a vote. I had promised the state library to bring that mobile unit and it was done so much for the, for the education of our people out in the county and our school board uh, and, and our teachers and our school systems in the county and in our grade elementary and our high school that it meant so much to them uh, in signing uh, their uh, class work and they had to get research done, and it had worked so well that, uh, and I had, I had give him a handshake, and I kept my word. I put it on the physical court's agenda for action. Uh, I had, have never, since I've been in office, asked the magistrate for a vote, just give them all the information, let them vote the way they want to vote. And, of course, I've always done that, and I still do that today. I just lay it out on the table and they can vote the way they, they feel like they, they vote the way that their people want to vote the way that they make their minds up to vote and move on to something else and solve problems and get things done. 
But I had a magistrate then, had the, uh, the oldest magistrate uh, in seniority on the court was Taylor Dock Justice. Taylor Jock always on any issues that was very controversial. <laughs> uh, Doc would always uh, give me a hands up, I'd say you'd say, and say, Judge, here's what it, the layout looks like. I've talked to the magistrate. He called me at home, Brandon, and said, uh, got good news and bad news. And I said, well, give me the bad news. Bad news is, Judge, that you don't have the vote to get this library district established and the library tax established. And I said, well, now you give me the bad news. What's your good news? He said, it's good news. But two of the magistrates are not going to be present. It's going to be a tie vote, and you're going to have to untie it. <laughs> there are not many things in government that anybody, no matter who they are, in leadership position or are an executive, uh, uh, can say that they got something done. In this instance, I can. I broke the tie to establish a county library system that has brought this system, and I hope you all have the pictures of these, of these, uh, and I think you do, of, of all of these libraries built under this, including the Pikeville Library, including the libraries that I mentioned at Burgey Phelps and Belfry. Uh, part of this system. By that vote that day, the physical court established a taxing district, and under the uh, they got six percent of the property tax to operate this system, and that is a lot of money in a county the size of Pike County, and the the evaluation put on the property uh, by the by the uh, PBA and the state by the state that the valuations is put up on the property. So uh, then they they was able to then with the, with the leadership of of Joseph W. Justice, a local attorney, who want, who who served even for a short period of time as county attorney, but Joe was was for education. He uh, he he was a very successful lawyer, but he wanted to give back to the community, and by so he could give back. He was doing it and was chairman of the library board, and he's still on the board. Still on. Still on it. But uh, he he gave leadership of, of the local board. The local board, it, by statute, uh, I get uh, th three names from the library board when they have a vacancy, and I take the three names, uh, one out of the three names, and appoint them, and they're staggered years. And I appoint the library board with the approval of the Pike County Physical Court. So we put together a good board. We still got one of the best boards in Kentucky. We then the staff they hired has been unbelievable. And the uh, library was headed up by by Mrs. Allen, Lou Ella Allen, and she was director of libraries for the county. Has been for years. And uh, then, she, then her assistant is uh, Delina Adkins, the head librarian of, of all the library system. And then the library, of course, was built here at Pikeville and these others out in the county. And and of course, if and a library has been something, and Brandon, I know you're that way. If I say something to you and you don't know, now you say I'll run back to the computer. I want to find that out. Well, I've always been, since I've been very young, just like you. I'm inquisitive, I guess would be the word, when, when I hear anything. I made many trips to the library. Well, you're a genealogy guy, too, so. I'm genealogy. I won the genealogy of the year uh, in Kentucky and uh, for Eastern Kentucky in 2005. But, but look. I was out of office 11 years, and uh, I, I still stayed active. Was on boards and commissions and uh, Y board and, and all. And and any time that I wanted to know something that I didn't think I knew everything about, I went up to this library here in Pikeville. And then when I decided to get back in to to uh, run for public office, 
I would uh, work out at the Y of the morning, go home, take a shower, change clothes, and come back. And I did research on on the important issues facing Pike County in future years. That is our energy issues. That is all issues of housing, what, whatever it is. I went to that library. And with the assistance of the staff at the Pikeville Library, and they had to assist me a lot of things, find things for me. And they, they helped me so much get ready to get back into politics and be knowledgeable of what was going on in Kentucky. I got up on the Kentucky laws that had changed since I'd been out of office. I, I found out by research up there that we were pro the largest producer of natural gas, and I'd never heard that mentioned at all in any media or anything uh, about Pike County being the leading producer of natural gas in the Commonwealth, and we are today. We produce around 53 percent of natural gas, but those are the things that, uh, that I know the importance of library, talking with students, talking with teachers, talking with superintendents of the Board of Education. Uh, I well understand this. Now, then libraries are fine out in the county. They're, they're meeting, and, and I know that, that, uh, that I've been to these branch libraries. I know that uh, when school's out, that many students can't afford computers at home. I know they, they, they want to learn, and, it want, we, and we want them to learn at a very young age, but some families are just not able to provide that. So that is where the libraries have filled the vacuum throughout this county and here at the one at Pikeville. Go into any of these and watch your students are getting their lesson. But that's not the end of it. Go in that any time during the day and see the adults who use the libraries for their own knowledge and research and, and see what these libraries mean to the people out in this county. You know, Judge, a lot of the stuff we do in your office has, requires a lot of research. The historical marker at Liberty, uh, John Doug spent an entire day at the library and got every bit of that information. And oh, gosh, yes. Uh, yes. Historical markers are a big one to uh, use the library for. We still use the library, but in the last few years, we know that we're now in the computer age. And the library, uh, that we have to go, had to go into downloading uh, music, e-books, audio books, Ancestry.com, Mango Language, uh, even car manual, Antique Price, price Guide. And you know, I knew a lady one time that had a stroke. And she had to teach herself again, and her duologist told her this, that you go to the library and you check out your books. You are a, you are a professor. And your mind is, is, you've lost that part of it, but you, you have a section where you can relearn. She went to the library and bought the books through elementary school, through high school, through college again. And she had made that trip through life, but she was only 49 or 50 years old when she had the stroke. And she taught herself and she wasn't even able to take care of her checkbook, Brandon. But she taught herself, and, to, and she could use her own checkbook. She went back to work. She had to quit work. She didn't want to draw a disability, didn't want to draw a check. She went back to work. But the library is where she went to. And, and she was able to use their facilities. And this was when they had the libraries, that's when they brought in some computers, and she was able to use that. If you want a question of law, they, ha they always have the Westlaw database. Uh, they have newspapers. We're not missing the name. We got a fellow who works for us that continuously goes to the library, local library, reads the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, continuously use all of the publications that are available at the library. And they have, uh, they can go on computer to the Visual State Library and get all the all of that and access databases even to Washington, D.C. and to the National Library. You can go on a library and, and, and that. 
But having said all this, we know what's happened. In the building where our library is headquartered is uh, the library, which is square footage is very small, and that is the library here in Pikeville. And 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 um, and then you you got the offices that they op have to operate these out in the county. And realizing that uh, things are going to change. Uh, and continue to change in new technology and new and the state of the art that we have and new, new as new computer programs and new new technology comes forth, all of this wireless that we have, that uh, they and knowing that and if anybody's ever been up there, I was just up the other day with a meeting uh, with with the library board in regard to another issue, and was was in the offices that they occupy. And that's in the, the building uh, next to the library on the second floor. Very small offices. And we have a very, it's a very sophisticated, complicated thing to administer libraries in America today, in Kentucky and in Pike County. We didn't have the room. The fact that, they, that this board was getting 6% of the property tax and oh, years ago had the forethought to start putting in a building fund, putting in a building fund, so that they could not not run a library system for today, and not run a library system like we started, and like they had been part of the change that had taken place when the computers came in. And let me say, I took two computer programs uh, through the library. One that was up to the Pikeville Library, and one was was on Greasy Creek that they moved me into that one. It was another system in the use of of, of a, and I can remember when the, uh, you probably don't know that I stay so busy, but I can remember uh, in the class at the one I had at the Greasy Creek location of that readiness type center the Board of Education had, uh, I did my bullet points for my opening remarks. Uh, opening up of the Big Sandy History Museum. Mm. I did my bullet points right on the computer and had my print out and I went down and, and took part with the mayor and the, the advisory group and the board uh, of uh, opening up the Big Sandy Museum. But uh, not only have I have that story to tell where I educated myself and brought me up to date to, so that I could govern this county in the proper way it ought to be governed with the, all the knowledge that I could get that I got through our, our library system. But knowing they didn't have room, they, they had this building fund that built up over the years and they was able then to do their planning. And, and if, if anybody has never been to the Elkhorn City Library, it is a it is the nicest library, one of the nicest that I've been in in the Commonwealth, and I've been in a lot of libraries. I, I remember I've been to over 120 counties. In many of those counties, I have visited libraries, uh, but that's the most beautiful library, the way that it's built. It has the entrance in it, has the books, but the windows looking at those beautiful mountains of Central Appalachia out those back, it's all glass in the back. And I mean, it's it's absolutely beautiful. Downstairs conference room, uh, they always use that conference room every year. I've been there for seminars. Uh, I've been there with the, the Civil, Civil War encampment they have every year. And they always have a local author there. And it is highly interested, educational, and and, and that facility if you've never been there, go. Uh, and, and these librarians out in the county, uh, as, as you go to Belfry and you have Donna Hager and Janetta Stiltner and Anna Maddox, and Elkhorn City, you have April uh, Deaton, uh, Peggy Robinson, and Reba Robinson, and Scarlett Stewart. And up Virgil, you have Elaine Sykes and Stacy Chapman, Phelps, Scarlett Stewart, and, and then you have Donna Hager, which also is at Belfry and over at Felt. And then you have at Pikeville Charlene Hopkins and you have Darlena Adkins, which is over all the libraries in the county. 
And then you have Lou Allen. Let me say about the director of libraries for Pike County. One of the most dedicated persons that I've ever been associated with, and I've been around in government uh, for a lot of years, and, and in the courthouse a lot of years, 30-some uh, uh, years. But she is the most dedicated person who believes in making available to the people of this county one of the best library programs, and that just having a building don't make a library. It does not. Uh, just having a church don't make a church. It's the members in the church. So the same with libraries, but this lady is completely dedicated and gives her time and is a, a hard worker in, involved in the daily operations of this library, put together her and this board and this leadership. And, uh, and the, the board chairman, Mr. Blackburn now, I've, I've met with him several times, even met with him for uh, appoint him and reappoint him. And uh, Joe Justice became a state judge and he still had his heart in this program and, and wanted to see their new plan, which is this building right here that's on the screen. And that, and this is going to be a beautiful library system. The board went down about two and a half or three years ago and bought property above Lowe's in a, the most heavily traffic area in Pike County, and that's at the intersection of uh, 23, 119, 460, and 80. That's where they all uh, intersect, right there, going over to Lowe's, uh, Food City, Walmart, Post office and all those houses uh, back on that uh, back on that beautiful mountain down there, and and they're in a high traffic area. I believe we were told a hundred thousand cars a day go through. And that they line. bought yes, and they bought uh, it's uh, one of the largest in the county, but it's one of the largest in eastern Kentucky. Matter of fact, that intersection, and of course that causes more wrecks and so yeah. forth too. Of course, on the other side, but. Uh, but, but that uh, they they bought a lot down there, uh, right below Tractor Supply. Probably people today is wondering, well, what's that building going up down there? They haven't been a lot of publicity on it. But that building, once completed, as uh, I understand uh, this morning, you you all gave me a figure. It was a. a around ten million dollars. I thought it was six, but evidently it's ten million dollars. And the square footage, if I remember, was around 35,000 square footage. And gosh, this is needed. Uh, it needed at a, at a time the libraries in, in, the, in America is changing. Libraries in Kentucky are changing. And we've got to get more out to the people uh, in, in an instant. And what a better way to do it and to take care of those people, adults and the young people, who, through no fault of their own, uh, desires to have information like everybody else has. That makes a better government for us. That makes people, uh, when they go out and vote, know more what's going on in the county. It, they can know what's going on in the rest of America and the rest of the world. And we need that. We need to give people more knowledge and more capability and to have more insight to make better decisions in their lives and to get information out. Judge, you mentioned the, the mobile unit, <coughs> the bookmobile. Um, it's evolved as well. And I think you have uh, I on do. the screen here a picture on it. Today. I do, and it's evolved as well. Now they have the mobile. You and I went up and toured the mobile technology lab where it's let's, basically a bookmobile with computers. Let's so. talk about the mobile technology lab. And, and you've got a picture of it right here that, that got people uh, standing in it. This is the movement towards what's happened in America. And, and I want to thank our congressman for, for his help and, uh, and everybody involved in helping this library board uh, get this mobile technology unit. Something that w will enhance uh, uh, this county and, and, and education more than anybody knows. And it is part of the change going on in this country in libraries. That change has been met head-on by this board 
having the, the board, and, and I commend the people who served on the board in the past, is not on it at this time, who had the forethought to put in a building fund and then to, to put a package together and get this building under construction. And Brandon, you have a picture on here of what it will look like. And I know that the people come in my office and say, what is that great building going up down here above Lowe's on the North Mayo Trail? And I tell them, and the, 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 I'm not going into detail like we're doing here today, but I tell them what it is and how important it is and how this is going to enhance the lives of the people of the ever ever citizen in this county. Now, in a recent meeting with the with the board, I'm talking about the county library board. I was informed that they their plan is is to keep this library in Pikeville as a satellite library because uh, they 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 have so many people coming in to use the computers that students that, that would maybe not have transportation and adult who walk from Myers Towers and their houses in Pikeville to this library and their plan is to keep that uh, library as a and, that, and of course that's the decision of the board mm -hmm. uh, not uh, anybody else's decision that's their decision so that's their plans presently well, the, the so they uh, they uh, I don't know the date I don't know where you all got that timeline of this being completed, but uh, look look what this is going to do. You look at what's going on in the city of Pikeville and in Pike County, and we have said so much that uh, we're blessed to have the most progressive county in Kentucky, and we're blessed to have the most progressive city, the city of Pikeville. As I go around the state, I say the city of Pikeville even has a, a beautiful parking garage. I always say that. But then to say that we have a six billion dollars worth of uh, contracts out working in Pike County and you got the coal building in town and, and you got that for 30, 33 million and more uh, uh, and you got the hospital now up to 145 million dollars and then you got the justice million around 33 million now uh, uh, about 80 some percent completed and you got all these bridges you got your 270 million dollar contract out completion of 460. You got your new bridge under construction at Draflin, and, and and you got your new school at Phelps. You got your Shelby Valley School. You got the new school at, at Millard on the drawing board. And you got another new school uh, that's uh, that. Uh, that. And, and, and to say during a time of a national recession, everything comes to fruition. But then to add this to all of, of I've said and everybody knows about, they know now that they have this great library that's being constructed, which is certainly needed in this county. Certainly needed because they have these areas. It will be places for meeting rooms, which we never have enough meeting rooms in the county. I know that we've, we've used the Garfield House in the city. has been so gracious to us for us to go over there and have meetings. And I, I hope we'll be able to deal you. I understand the chamber's occupying that now. And then, of course, we, we're blessed to have a, a room that we can use the extension off, but it's not a great big room. So, But uh, my understanding that uh, they're going to have in this new building uh, where the, where the where groups, not only county government, but city government, and any organization, association, nonprofit, or anybody, that a, a club organization that wants to have a meeting, to better the quality of life for the people in this entire county, including our cities of, of Pikeville, Elkhorn City, and Coal Run. So this is a is a great addition to the uh, what everything's going on. Uh, we we hope to do an in-depth and uh, Pike TV, which goes into 23,000 homes that we're on here today. We've discussed with Al Greenfield, Brandon, you have you and Dan about about a documentary, which I understand is underway, to do a documentary on the county library system. And it just got underway this week, I understand, yep. or will get underway uh, this week. And so that the people can know, and I wanted today to give a little bit of history of it, but Al Greenfield is one of the best in the country at putting together and directing and producing documentaries. 
and I'm sure that this will be a great documentary. And it, uh, and I'm, and I'm sure that he's going to be talking to these families, young and old, out in these counties, that what this library system will mean and what it will mean in the future. And I'm going to commend uh, the the board, uh, uh, Luella Allen and uh, Delina Adkins, and each one of these people at each one of these libraries out in the county, and all of the people in this county that helped this county government many years ago, many years ago, start a library system with the community, the government, and the state library board starting this system, which has built into this great system we have today. And I know that when you're in politics and you pass a tax, sometimes that they, you pay for it politically in votes. But I, it hasn't cost me a vote, and I have supported two taxes. I was the one that tied that got the 6% taxing district uh, for the library system. I am the, have been called the father by the state newspaper of the state severance tax that, that brought money back to develop our county, coal counties of eastern Kentucky. And I, I don't know of a vote I've lost to being the father of coal severance tax or helping start a library system in this county. Because people, if you let them know, and we can let you know now, because we got Pike TV. So uh, this, this is a program. I know that I don't want to take up all this program, but I'll, I'll get some many calls. What is that building down there? <laughs> and my staff gets asked. And, and so now, now we know what it is, and you know what it is. Take advantage of it. Judge, I'm gonna, I'd like to talk about something right now that I think everybody likes to talk about, and that is sports. We've got a, a hidden gem in our courthouse. Let me, uh, let me say this, Brandon, and, and, and folks, I know you, you, you bleed red over in Pond Creek. Hey, I put up with it every day. It's Brandon <laughs> Roberts here. <laughs> uh, yes, and I said it at the last physical court meeting, and you all watched that program, and, and, and I said, uh, you know, Pike County is special. Pike County uh, sports means so much to the people of this county. Uh, I was blessed to be able to play sports at Pikeville High School. My son was able to play sports. And, but, uh, Brandon, uh, it's a way of life that we have here in these mountains. And Belfry is a great example of that. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, they support that football team and their basketball and all sports, volleyball over there, uh, as much or more than any school in Kentucky, I can say that. And I've said that by going to state championships and sitting in the stands down there and and and, and worry about because Pond Creek's empty. Because <laughs> they all load up and they all go to support Last, it. last one out and turn out the lights is what we say during football season. Well, that Everybody's happens. Gone. And, and uh, we have to, and I, and as people know, uh, our Sheriff Fuzzy Kazee graduated from Belfry. <clears throat> and he, uh, he's an avid fan of Belfry, traveled with them, been to the state playoffs. I had Jack Banks over here who went to all the playoffs. But uh, we would get worried about law enforcement over there, and the bank would be robbed, and we'd have to notify the state police. And everybody's gone, fudging all the deputies over in Pond Creek, and the constable, and everybody's gone. But, yes, we, they, they, uh, we love our... Sports. So uh, we in county government decided that we needed to to end in our to end of our heritage hallway. Uh, that we needed to establish a sports corner, and we and we have a, a committee that uh, handles heritage hallways and handles a sports corner. We was able to get some funding to build a heritage hallway, veterans hallway and to build sports hallway. And, uh, and we're well underway in that. We just had some trophies delivered last week. And uh, we have established in that, in that hallway on uh, 
established of a collection that Judge Hayes was able to put together because Judge Hayes, average uh, basketball player, high high, under the legendary John Bill Trivet, uh, went under Coach Bilcher at Pikeville College, uh, played basketball, avid fan. Myself played at Pikeville, avid, avid front fan. Everybody with Brandon Roberts on that committee, that's, as an avid fan he is. And we're blessed to have Mr. Collier at TND, who was a basketball player and an avid sport fella, who has the ability to do a lot of things that we needed done. We was blessed in county government to have a wood shop in county government and have an employee named Cliff Robinson who could uh, build all of our display cases. We was able to have people in the community who wanted to contribute. And Brandon, uh, the, uh, Mrs. Senator Cinnamon Rose of the Economy Drug, and they had some excess glass cabinet that sells for $3,500, $4,000. And it told her what we wanted to do in these hallways of the courthouse. And she sold us enough to go on one side of Heritage Hallways uh, for, for, for just a meager amount of money. And, and, and she too is interested in the, the veterans, the heritage, and, and the, the, the history of the sports of the county. So Judge, Judge Hayes uh, had put a collection of value at $3,000 plus dollars over the years of one ball player that was raised at Hayer, Kentucky, uh, Vernon Bickford. And he pitched for the Boston Braves. And I knew Vernon Bickford uh, uh, well growing up simply because of this. A lady in my community, uh, Jack Johnson's wife, Opal, was an aunt to Vernon Bickford, if I remember. And of course, we knew about Vernon Bickford when he pitched for the Boston Braves, then when they moved to Milwaukee. And he was a great pitcher. He was, uh, he pitched a no-hitter against the Brooklyn Dodgers. I can remember that because my friend Johnny Coleman, my, one of my best friends raised with him, passed and uh, one of the greatest sports advocates of this county. Uh, when Gene Davis and myself and him got together uh, at Shorty's uh, store or anywhere else, Shorty's paint store, uh, we was there if we could, an hour or two talking about the history of sports in this county. But Johnny Coleman, uh, uh, he, he just about died when Vernon Bickford got that against his beloved Dodgers. And uh, he, uh, it, it was un, un, unreal of what the Vernon Bickford, and he's got relatives still in Marbone. Uh, his dad was lived in West Virginia, worked for a coal company. Uh, his dad was transferred to Hayer, lived there a number of years and then transferred to Harlan. He had a brother that worked with him. They was in management of the coal company. And uh, his brother, uh, uh, General B uh, Bickford, who started the Pride Program, who was the head of the state uh, EPA office, and Congressman Rogers put the Pride Program in here in Kentucky, that, or in East Kentucky, that has meant so much to us uh, in this area of clean, cleaning it up and keeping it clean. Uh, for tourism, but in in Sports Corner, that that has been in place. We have not had an opening on that because in the other side, uh, we had we have something special for the people of this county. We have state championships, uh, uh, trophies, uh, replicas of trophies, of the same trophies that was given out by the state, and of championships. We need a little bit of help on one. And you might tell them who that was. That was in 1949. Yeah, Coach or Principal Rod Varney from Belfry brought us. He donated those wonderful plaques to us the other day the, of the Belfry State Championships. <clears throat> and he said that Belfry had a pole vault, state pole vault champion in 1949, but he had yet to been able to confirm that with Ireland Smith. So <laughs> Ireland, Ireland, Ireland is another sports enthusiast that I've had the opportunity. Because he was uh, he'd been my friend for years, but at, he was a member of the Y, and we always talk about what's going on in Pike County, but we talk about sports. But well, Ireland, uh, if, if Ireland's watching, we need him to call and give us the name of the pole vault champion in 1949. Nah, so <laughs> we need the name. We we've got the 
trophy that Belfry, of course, got, a replica of it. But we've got in that, we've got in that trophy case already sitting there is the 1964 Elkhorn City that was under Jack Hall, if I can remember. Yeah, I didn't know, I didn't know that under until Jack we started Hall doing this. Under Jack Hall in football. And then we go back and, and uh, folks, I can't do that myself. I've got to let this uh, Belfry diehard give you those, uh, what's in there from, from his beloved school. Uh, well, we got our 03 and 04 state championship AA trophies. And, uh, and th isn't that great? Yeah, and I'll go ahead and say this one too. Uh, uh, 87, 88, 89, back to back to back. <laughs> Pockwell Championships. Pockwell Championships are in there. He gave you the years. But folks, in, in addition to that, uh, we have Shelby Valley's replica of the trophy of the A Championship. And we have in there the Mr. Basketball uh, you have those in there already, don't you? We do. We, we got oh. the three Mr. Basketballs was Urban Stepp at Phelps. Uh, uh, who was the other? Todd May. Todd May at uh, Virgie at that time. And then, uh, and then of course, Elijah. And you there. got uh, Elijah Justice. Judge, I don't know uh, if a, that might be the most from any rural county in the state, three. No doubt about that. And uh, what great people that they are. What great, what, uh, what great people look at look at each one of these and what they've meant and what they've given back to the their community uh, uh and we're not through now if you're out there and, and we people just give us these if there are others out there please call my office uh, 432-6247 and let us know right. of any of these we have national championships naturally with Pockwell college winning the nia Championship and uh, Pikeville College, and then then you got UPIC, but you got you got not only the basketball national championship, but you got two national championships. Am I right, Brandon, on bowling, or maybe is, is it three? Three, yeah. three national championships. Oh four, oh eight, and twelve. And folks, listen, uh, the bowling don't have uh, divisions like NCAA, NCAA Division One, Two, Three, Four. It don't have them. All the universities and colleges all compete together. I remember uh, they, they on on their way. They beat some major universities, yeah. Wichita State, Wichita State, one, State yeah. uh, one year I remember in their in their bowling championships. It's not like football and basketball. So, uh, gosh, what a job Mr. Dameron up there has done in bowling, and uh, the, they are saluted and. Uh, and because of people has such an interest in sports, and it's so much of their life, we uh, we always, when you win a national championship or a state championship, it is our policy now to bring them in and honor them. Because here's the reason why: we are all ambassadors as we travel outside Pike County. We bring in the ac academic champions also, because they are. We brought in our own Miss Kentucky to honor here because she is one of the best ambassadors we have not only on the state but in the national stage. So that's what we do. We honor all we all ambassadors and we bring them in and we honor them which we should do. Well that's funny you say that Judge because I'm sitting here thinking I just thought I think maybe David Jones when he was at Belfry won something with track. I, I think I heard that. You know, the, the track and field and that stuff don't receive the publicity that football and basketball do, but that's what we need is for people to let us know. People hey, let us know about these because, uh, state uh, championships. Because they, 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 and they will be in this display track. Right. They'll be there forever for people to come in. So uh, so we uh, th this is we need your help. This belongs to you. This courthouse belongs to you. Uh, we won a, a national award with the Veterans Hallway. We won a national award with Heritage Hallway, and with your input, uh, Brandon, we could end, we could win one with Sports Hallway, Sports Corner. That's what we heard at the end of the hallway. And, and Judge, uh, anyone who wants to put anything in there or that needs to go in there, they need to know. Uh, and I know this, you're big on this, is it is secured. Yeah, we have cameras. When we got some of the display from University of Kentucky, our logical department in diggings at Fish Trap, we had to put more cameras in. That was a, we a had requirement to more for, locks. The, for the loan. When we, when we got loaned what we have in Veterans Hallway, we had to add locks 
to the cabinets and put more in that hallway and so that it's completely computerized. We have 24-hour 911 in the courthouse with a large monitor with continuous security on it 24 hours a day. So if you're attending and breaking into the Pike County Courthouse out there, beware because you're, you will be videoed. You are under surveillance, that's right. Judge, also, um, before we run out of time, let's mention the new development with the Vietnam Wall that we found out this week. Vietnam Wall, and, and, and that is a project that the city and county and, and the veterans groups are doing and the community leaders uh, are, are putting together. And we've worked on it for about three and a half years. We have to say the congressman helped us get started. And, uh, and Jeannie and Bobby had been over to Charleston last year at that one, got all the information. The city has been so gracious and so cooperative. It will, they wanted it in a solemn place, a quiet place. So it's going to be at the soccer field. And uh, we now are raising money. The city puts some money in, the county puts some money in. And, and uh, we just we, we need people to contribute and help. Uh, the, all of the organizations, uh, they had a meeting. We had to move it from my conference room. <laughs> That's what we will say. The committee yeah. come in, uh, and we had to move it out in the courtroom this week. Yep. So uh, a lot of people are getting involved. Uh, Larry Thacker had called me recently and said, gosh, uh, I, I'm telling everybody, talking to everybody, we got to raise money. And now we've added to the list to bring in a U-1 Huey helicopter. You'll see the picture of it here uh, for display. And I was updated on my ride to the Ad District by Judge Hayes and was updating me because I had not been in regard to this helicopter. But uh, money has to be used. We have to pay the expenses to bring it up here. It can't be flown, but pictures can be taken in it with children and, and with veterans. And it has all of the armature, and I say it has the, all the guns, all of everything in it. They can't fly this machine, but they can't take that out of it and it has to be secured and somebody will come. It is a group of retired helicopter pilots who live in North, North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah. And uh, they was contacted, they're gonna bring it up here, we'll pay their expenses. It's gonna be part of this. We, they, we had the meeting to get input from the community, uh, and everybody. Now we will meet very soon and uh, we got everybody's ideas and everybody's input. Now we'll let the city, the county, and a representative of the vet veterans and others as an executive board get together, Brandon, and, and make this thing work under the strict guideline that they, they've set out in regard to, to bringing this wall here. It will be a great occasion. It will be a solemn occasion because uh, uh, I know when when uh, I, I know from looking at the pictures and the video I've seen uh, to memorialize these and these are all veterans need to be memorialized and remembered and given credit, but it's your Vietnam veterans that wasn't treated properly by our country, and we owe it to them. We owe it to these families. Some people in our county and a lot of lives were given in that conflict can get complete closure by going to this wall in that solemn place and see the name of their loved one and, and off. And, and we, we look forward to this. The date, you have it on here. The date is there. And uh, we want, we're, we're in Virginia, counties boarding us, the West Virginia County, all the counties in Eastern Kentucky, all of the organizations of the veterans are involved in it. Uh, the community's involved in it. Uh, Pike County Tourism is involved in it. Pikeville Tourism involved in it. It's going to be a lot of people in uh, during these uh, days. On uh, the date is run from July the fourth uh, to the uh, runs from the third third to the seventh. It runs from the th from the uh, Brandon. It runs from the third to the seventh. Yes. Uh, and uh, so uh, that 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 will be the, our, our hotels are going to be full and our tourists is going to be involved. Uh, that we're marketing it. Pike TV has, has, has been great. They're, they're running, letting people know from this program and also uh, 24 hours a day of what we'll have available on this Vietnam Wall. And uh, we, we, we're able to pull these people together and have everybody working together, regardless of what that newspaper says over there. 
we work together on anything that we all agree on and we get things done and we make it happen and nothing don't happen. You, you have to work to make it happen. I'll tell you what. And nobody can do nothing by themselves. I don't, I, do, I can sp only speak for myself, but I don't, I don't think anyone else did either realize the undertaking this project was going to be when we took, when we decided, hey, let's try to yeah. get this wall here. Now, since this we've got everybody's input, we, we have to go have our meeting with, with the group who will pull it together and take that long list of guidelines. Oh, my gosh. Make, we have to meet them at the county line. And escort them. And escort them in with, with veterans and with a motorcycle escort with the police, which will be in this county, the uh, sheriff's car with a light on, and the city car with a light on, and escort them to the soccer field. And then look at the work it is to put that together. Yeah, eight, eight hours. Eight Saturday. hours to put that wall. It's just like the one, and I know there are people out there that's been to the wall. Judge Hayes has been to that wall. Yeah, when he's a kid. But. And he talked about crying when he went to the wall. But uh, uh, some other, a lot of people in this county have been there but to give everybody the opportunity to go to the Vietnam Wall and, and, and see what's been done in, in, in remembrance and memorializing uh, these thousands killed in this conflict and many from this county and from this area. Well, Judge, Lonnie Tackett knows, I served with a man, Jerry Sego, or Joe Sego down in Georgia. Well, of course, Lonnie from up Dorton. Yeah. Uh, Joe's brother is Jerry, who is a member of this North Carolina Helicopter Pilots Association, who's bringing that up. So j j by getting the veterans involved, we, basically, is what got this helicopter got this up here. done by bringing everybody in and, and, and starting to work on it. I know that our time's going to run out, and we haven't got through much of what we had to get into today, but in the next two or three minutes, what do you want to close out with? Uh, All in Peace Officers Memorial. We can do that. Talk yeah. about that. You have the pictures that will be on the on the television screen, and uh, we we've, we've been working again uh, uh, with everybody we could to memorialize uh, our fallen police officers. The Heritage Committee of the Hallway. Uh, we've held meeting after meeting in the past year or two. We uh, we got finally got money. We finally got money to do it with, and and it's it's going to be a reality. And we've already hired the company to do the uh, what goes on the wall. And then you have your group of Terry Thompson and those uh, people that has the group that's putting the monument on the outside. The names will be on the outside. The pictures will be on the inside, right next to the county court clerk's office. And I know we're going to run out of time before I can say everything I want to say I about know. this. That's but I promise you we'll bring it up on a future program. And I'm going to let you close it out on about anything else that you think that you need to get information out on which is a horse ride and so forth. Yeah, horse ride uh, May 18th, Saturday. And that's it, right on the screen for you to look at, the time, pictures. And, and Judge, just something close to my heart and yours here, um, the spay neuter. We're back trying to promote the spay and neuter that's again. That's the answer to, to uh, euthanize. Every time I see the number of animals, it's sad that has to be euthanized because of, of uh, uh, and we need to spay and neuter. If you, and, and, and please work with uh, with Pike County government, with the Humane Society, with ASPC, the other group, and let's get the let let's get the word out to you all to go get your animals spayed, and so we don't have to go through this. Ever ever shelter in America has to euthanize because of what I'm telling you to. Mm -hmm. Those who have cooperation from the masses don't have as much utilization. So let's be one of them county. Let's work to that goal to bring that down. And, and East Kentucky Broadcasting and the News Express. East Kentucky great. Broadcasting News Express is on board with us. They, we have programs. Pike TV's on board. We have the, the animal program, adoption program. The ASPC has their adoption program. Others has theirs. Let's, let's get on board. And, and we love our animals in Central Appalachia like we love our sports. So let's, let's be serious about this animal situation. All right, Judge, we're out of time, and uh, April is Pike County Cleanup Month very quickly. But uh, um, on behalf of Judge Rutherford, uh, thanks for watching the Pike County Report.